one of us last night his uh, oxygen level went below 60 very close not feeling great <laughs> we tried to book a helicopter but the cost was really high for him yeah. one two who has got a plastic bag? Hello! This is delivery. This is an Italian jeep. When we woke up by the bursting sound of a punctured tire somewhere in the middle of Nepal, we knew this ain't going to be an easy trip. I'm Masood and this is our trip to Everest Base Camp. <laughs> Our trip started at 5 a.m. in a little town called Mantali at the foot of the mountains. From here, we had a short walk to the nearby local airport of Rameshap. Ramoshep Airport is about 132 kilometers from Kathmandu and it is frequently used as an alternative hub for flight to Lukla, the starting point for many Everest expeditions. Like many airports in Nepal, Ramoshep is highly dependent on weather conditions. Flights can be delayed or cancelled due to the poor visibility or adverse weather, which is a common challenge in the region. The flight to Tenzing Hilary Airport takes about 20 minutes and this airport is known as the most dangerous airport in the world. The landing feels like the plane is heading directly to the mountain. Pasang Lama Sherpa Gate is more than just an entrance, it is a monument of an extraordinary woman, the first Nepali woman to summit Mount Everest. She successfully reached the summit on April 22, 1993. She and her team encountered severe weather conditions, high wind and snowstorm, frostbite and physical exhaustion significantly impaired her ability to continue safely and finally she lost her life in this expedition. We enter Fakhtin by crossing our very first suspension bridge. For today, we only had 4 hours of hike with 290 meters of climb. It was a relatively easy day and we were super excited to spend our first night in this beautiful location. Day 2 started with a little bit of a confusion. We were expecting a refill of our water in the guest house, but after some conversation, we realized the best option is to buy our water from the nearby shops as they were offering a cheaper price. The price here was about 50 rupees per bottle, 
and as we went higher the price also got higher if you're crossing this path you need to know you should not bring any drones with you they will be confiscated and you will not be allowed to bring your drone or a big knife in this region Hillary, a name you hear often in this region. Sir Edmund Hillary, mountaineer, explorer, philanthropist, the first climber confirmed to have reached the summit of Mount Everest in May 1953, ambassador of New Zealand in Nepal, navigator in the Royal New Zealand Air Force during World War II, the first person to reach North and South Poles and summit Everest in 1958, founder of Himalayan Trust non-profit which built school and hospital in the Khumbu region, vice president for the Abortion Law Reform Association of New Zealand, the honorary president of the American Himalaya Foundation, Time magazine named him one of the hundred most influential people of the 20th century. He's a hero of this country and um, he put us on the map. You know, he, he, he made New Zealand world famous and you ask any child who's on the hundred, who's on the twenty, who's on the fifty, no one knows. They all know who's on the five. Even the After about six hours of nice hike, we made it to Namche Bazaar. Sometimes called as the gateway to the Everest, is more than just a stopover for trekkers. It is a vibrant and a culturally rich village that offers a blend of modern facilities and traditional Sherpa hospitality. Despite its remote location, Namche Bazaar offers a range of facilities. These include lodges, restaurants, cafe, gear shops, and internet cafes. There are also ATMs and the last money changer for the trek available here. Given all the transaction from here will be on cash only, this is your last stop. In terms of price, the gear sold here are slightly more expensive than Kathmandu, but branded shops normally sell their product in their official country price. So if you happen to need a gear, this is the last spot you could do the purchase. For those interested, Sherpa Culture Museum, the Namche Monastery and the Sagar Matha National Park Visitor Center offer insight into the local culture, history and natural environment. For the rest of us looking for some fun or dusting off the fatigue, we can head to a super cool local bar named The Hungry Yak. <laughs> As we stepped over the 3000 meter altitude, it is imperative to see changes in our body. Trekkers typically spend at least two nights in Namche Bazaar to acclimatize. This helps to reduce the risk of altitude sickness as we ascend further toward Everest Base Camp. For today, we spent about four hours wandering around Khumjung Peak and visiting the magnificent Hotel Everest View at the altitude of 3,780 meters. I have created a short video showing inside and out of the Japanese wonder if you haven't seen it yet. Namche was our last fun stop before things getting serious. From here on board, the climbs got harder and our days got longer. Our plan today includes about 12 km of hike and about 900 meters uphill. What makes today a bit more challenging is descent and the steep climbs, but we sure know how to make a hard day much easier. Yeah. 
Yo, yo. <laughs> That's funny. Explosion in person. So, from the edge of our camp. Don't be tired. 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 Don't be تو کمک ها مریض روز روز سوم چهارم رسیدیم دنگوشه آرش روز ششم سفر ولی خب روز چهارم کونوردی بچه ها امروز حسابی خسته کوفته حالا خیلی خیلی خوشگل بود ولی وضعیت هوا اینجوری بود یعنی قشنگ ما رسیدیم اینجا اینجوری مه و بند و وسط و اینا بارون هم یه خورده زده همه لو داغون ساعت چنده ساعت چنده ساعت دو ده دقیقه است دو ده دقیقه دیگه جمع جور کردیم و شیش شام ساعت دهانه نهار خوردیم این اسم انزان های نخوستین داره قضا بخوریم ساعت شیش شام بخوریم ساعت شیش شام بخوریم و دیگه ساعت هفت و هشت دیگه کله هم شد شیش سفارش دادی آقارش امروز اسپاگتی اسپاگتی و کدومش؟ بولونز بولونز ماکارونی بولونز ماکارونی من یه ماکارونی بولونز گرفتم گویا تو نپال ماکارونی بولونز خیلی معروفه میزنه مرغ هم قراره بزنه برام بولونز با بولونز با ما خدا خیر بگذرون دیگه هر چی پیش آید خوش آید بریم آجیل بخوریم دیگه اینا آجیل است که از ایران اومده خود تشکر از دوست عزیزمون And we're stop for day four. Hotel Summit. After about four hours. Let's see. 11.30. So total we did eight kilometer and a half. And let's go. Chamu kone. Kakul. Hey, Aju. <laughs> And I watch it, look at it again. So I hope it's safe. Okay. That's where we're heading. Everest is not visible, I think. It's under the clouds. <coughs> I'm a bit. Uh, feeling altitude I'm not bad at all but I kind of feel like we just arrived at 4400 meters which is normal to feel a bit under the weather uh, in our team everybody feels okay uh, one of us is has a low oxygen level I will see how he's gonna do one of us is a bit tired physically uh, and rest of us are 
sort of okay my brother was sick and he's getting better so that's uh, that's good news so he can continue and we'll see how's the weather gonna be tomorrow uh, we're gonna do climatization and we're gonna sleep at the same place Dimbuche one more night to get used to this 4300 meter altitude and we'll see how it goes after at this point of the hike hot showers start getting expensive it costs about 700 rupees per person but in this specific hotel we had a solar water heater which meant during the day we could take a hot shower if the sun was bright enough from the food perspective we could already tell what's in the menu as almost all lodges serve similar dishes Dalbat is our to-go dish and once we got bored we switched to pasta and sometimes ventured toward the unknown dishes in the menu First 5,000 meter ever. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Just arrived with Mertot and Nakul. First person, first three of the six who got here. The rest are coming, I think, not far. And uh, I think we're gonna go down. We shouldn't yeah. stay here for long. <laughs> Today was an special day for me as I experienced my first ever 5,000 meter elevation. I was feeling mentally and physically great. In this trip, I have decided to not use a porter and carry my own backpack, which weighed about 13 kilograms. Given up to this point, I was supercharged. I decided to add a bit more to it by running downhill, which probably wasn't the best idea, as you will know later. Yes. The Everest Memorial, situated at a ridge above the village of Tukla at an altitude of about 4,830 meters. The memorial serves as a tribute to climber and Sherpas who have lost their lives in Mount Everest and other peaks in the region. Hello! This is Lobuche, yes. We just arrived to Lobuche. We got our room right now. It's not much, it's not very exciting, but uh, we are in an altitude of 4,800 uh, or 900, if I'm not mistaken. We are feeling good. Unfortunately, one of us had to stay in Dimbuche because last night is. Uh, oxygen level in you know, blood oxygen went below 60 and he generally wasn't feeling great so we didn't take the risk and he decided to stay down with one of our guides and uh, five of us we continue with one of our guides up here to Lomuche and tomorrow is a due date tomorrow we're going to hit uh, base camp and 
the temperature is great so far we have been lucky the we had sun every morning when we started so it went great <laughs> guys finally base camp i'm coming Feeling great, a bit of headache, feel like shit, but very excited to see this camp. <laughs> a, bit, a lot dehydrated, uh, haven't taken the pill, so it doesn't matter. <sighs> Hoping I can sleep tonight. <laughs> Finally, after eight days, we are here. Here is the last bit of the hike, and I'm feeling just about 20% of my capacity. The accumulation of exhaustion, cold night, thin air with low sleep quality has really drained me. But standing at the foot of the world's highest peak, I felt a profound sense of gratitude. The mountains, with its towering majesty, was both a destination and a gateway to a deeper understanding. Waves of feeling flowing in our tired bodies. Now is the time to celebrate this achievement. <laughs> Let's go. That's a lot more than this is. Wow. Coming down from base camp was the hardest thing I have done in this trip. Even though I was carrying a light backpack, every step was harder to take. We were all feeling low on energy and had difficulty breathing. The next day, the quality of my sleep in Gorakshev was the worst of all. I woke up many times throughout the night and the freezing cold temperature made it harder and harder. Waking up with a horrible headache, we decided that we have to head down and skip the morning trip to Kalapathal. It was supposed to have a very nice view of Everest, but for many reasons we decided to skip it and preserve some energy for the descent. We put base camp behind us and now we had to deal with the challenge of getting back to Kathmandu. Every day we were presented with more news about the Lukla airport condition and we were discussing our possible options. We made it to Lukla one day earlier. We were supposed to be here on Saturday. We, we did the two days descent in one day and we got here in a, on a Friday hoping we could catch a flight a bit earlier, go back to Kathmandu, enjoy the time there, do some shopping and uh, relax a bit before heading back. But uh, as you can see the weather situation is really bad. Uh, there is a lot of haze, I think it's because of the burning forests and uh, farms and there is no wind so nothing changes, it actually gets worse. Now is 9 a.m. 
and we've been here since 6 30. the weather just got worse and there has been zero flights today there are a lot of uh, people hanging around the airport waiting for the flight there is like six flight before us seems like some flight also got uh, delayed from yesterday so it's very unlikely we can fly today and we all a bit tired and also a bit sick we're coughing and with someone sneezes it's, it's complicated everybody's craving for steak having dal bath for for every day uh, 10 days and uh, normal same menu every day it hasn't been easy <coughs> exactly it's quite a type of cough we have almost everybody in the hostel has the same cough you could hear it all night it feels like an hospital every hostel but uh, yeah we are still keeping the spirit up hoping uh, we could fly maybe today there is no sign only helicopter is, is are able to fly we tried to book a helicopter but the cost was really high for for all of us and it couldn't fit six people maximum was five so that is uh, still an option but it's a very expensive option to try to avoid so yeah let's uh, let's see if we can get out of Lukla we are walking again <laughs> let's walk to Pia and then from there take a freaking uh, four by four and then go to there so half an hour right turn to four hour hike and two hours uh, two hours jeep ride yeah. the situation we have horrible day today Given the short time we had, we decided to head down to a village called Paia. From there, we took a 4x4 heading to another town with access to the main road. This is where we stepped into unknown, even for our guides. Seven people packed into a car, we hit the unfinished mountains roads of Nepal. You see that Nopul and Google has not even gotten onto the car. Mama mia, mama sita. Woo yeah, boy. Mama sita. Nice. Yeah, boy. <laughs> okay, I'm quite glad that oh, yeah. we take we took the pill. One, two. Oh, oh, two. I got to record this. No, but Sue's doing. We need to have a plan for fuel. Ah! Who has got a plastic bag? Hello! I'm Maya! Hello! Jason here. And Masood. Oh, we stopped. Okay. Momentary. Oh, and it's one. What happened? Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Alright, let's. Uh, Find a photo, find a photo. Take a picture, please. Take a picture, please. Take a picture. We stop, we stop for tomato delivery. This is an Italian cheap. <laughs> the guy stopped to give a box of tomatoes. That, that, that's the tomatoes. Yes, of course. He, gave, he need to drop off the box of tomatoes. I think we're gonna die. Like, we are like now. Fully ready to go, we are having fun, but in two hours we're gonna cry. <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> Ui. Wow. Just like that. Holy water. That's in the middle. Oh. That thing is in the middle. Why is that there? I wonder. You know, that box. I think that guy couldn't make it. Yeah, I think so. Perhaps I hit the body. <laughs> almost, almost. Stop for a pee break. Good.
What do you think about the quality of the road for this uh, this trace? Well, the road is uh, quite effective at getting from point A to B, <laughs> but could improve the smoothness a little bit. The driver seems to be calming down. He is very relaxed. We need the driver in the vehicle. <laughs> the road goes fine. He is very relaxed. There is a curve. We don't know what's ahead of us. Seems like a big drop, but yeah. who gives a fuck? It's just a black abyss. Yeah. <laughs> this commentary is sponsored by <laughs> Wintry. This episode is sponsored by Wintergy. On our right, we have a 4x4 with some nice green accents. We say hello. We nice say hello. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The remain of the trip was a grueling 16 hours of curvy dangerous roads of Nepal. The driver drove through the night and we finally made it to Kathmandu at about 10 am one day before my flight. Honestly the entire hiking days was not as hard as the 16 hours. Well this is what makes adventures and we made it back in one piece. I guess that's what counts. Overall this trip was something I would remember for life and I'm looking forward to come back to this beautiful country again. Thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe to my small channel. It gives me more energy to make better videos. See you in the next video and Khuda Hafiz. Adventurer, a legend was.